verse of scripture and give you a few thoughts and we'll be done in about an hour and a half. Amen. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this good blessing, Lord, again, to be in the house of the Lord today. I pray, God, you'd help us to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, give us those things that we need to say that will encourage us this Thanksgiving season. Let us be truly thankful to you. Lord, we want you, we want you to honor us with your presence here at the house of God. Lord, I pray for myself, God, you forgive me, cleanse me, make me fit to be here today. And I pray, God, again, you would help us, Lord, to uh, preach the word. And, Lord, let it be a blessing to someone. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 100 tells us this. Most of y'all can quote the psalm. But it is a, a psalm of praise that, that was written. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Everybody make a joyful noise. Say amen. 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 There you go. Make a joyful noise. Uh, to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We've done that. We've come before his presence with singing today. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. How many of you believe today that the Lord, he is God? Say amen. 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 He is God. Uh, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. There is enough thanksgiving and enough praise in this verse. You and I can feast off these words all week if we really want to do so. Now, we enter this Thanksgiving season, and I'm one of the worst in the world to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of this particular holiday. Uh, you know, I, I sell food. I sell groceries. I sell produce. And people come from everywhere, and they're going to buy that last sweet potato. They're going to buy that last turkey. And they're going to get that last bit of ham, and they're going to have those, uh, those uh, peanut butter pies and those pumpkin pies and those uh, coconut pies and those buttermilk pies. And they're going to buy all of that, and it's going to, you know, and I'll be working, you know, the next three days. It's going to be probably 10 hours a day. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm one of the worst if I'm not real careful to, you know, I'm glad I've got a job. Amen. I'm thankful for that, that I've got a job that I can go to and work and provide for my family. I, I'm thankful to God for that. But if we are not careful as a people, we will forget why we have this day of Thanksgiving. And someone said the other day, well, that's not a uh, federal holiday. It is a Christian holiday. And it is a national holiday, but I'm telling you, most people will not remember anything but the food and the football games and the hunting and whatever. And I've got no problem with any of that, but we ought to be thankful and bless His name. And it ought to ring true to our hearts that we're thankful. Let me read you just a couple of things that I came up with here. The real celebration of Thanksgiving, for many of us, the meaning of Thanksgiving usually includes feasting, uh, Four-day weekends, football games, floats, family reunions, or a, a forerunner to Christmas festivities or Christmas shopping is what they're trying to say here. And, uh, you know, there's places getting all kinds of flack for opening on Thanksgiving Day, and it's all commercialized. So, so listen, however, uh, the first Thanksgiving, however, was neither a feast nor a holiday, but a simple gathering following the Mayflower's arrival at Plymouth Rock on December uh, 11th, 1620, the pilgrims suffered the loss of 46 of their original 102 colonists. With the help of 91 Indians, the remaining pilgrims survived the bitter winter and yielded a bountiful harvest in 1621. In celebration, a traditional uh, harvest, English Harvest Festival lasted three days brought the pilgrims and the natives to unite in a Thanksgiving observance. They were glad to be alive. They were thankful that they had, had come through a long winter, and uh, you know they were thankful that the God had blessed them with a good harvest with the help of the Native Americans that were already here. God had blessed them, so they came together. Friend, they were thankful for survival. And friend, today we ought to be, as, as uh, believers, we ought to truly be thankful for all that that God has blessed us with and honor Him.
for what he has blessed with. Those things down there that I gave you know, showed you a while ago, and, and I'm thinking about those things, we ought to be thankful for every little thing that God does for us. Every little thing that we have. But we're a nation of abundance. We're a nation of plenty. The poorest of our land live better than most. The homeless of our land live better th than a lot of, a lot of people in, in third world countries. They may not have a roof over their head, but they've got a bridge to live on. I'm being serious, okay? They may not have the greatest food, but they can stand on the side of the road and somebody come give them money and they can buy whatever they want. And you say, well, that ain't nothing to be thankful for. If compared to other places that I've been where I've seen people literally uh, sleeping on the side of the road, they had nowhere to go and about starved to death, they're, even their homeless in this country are far better blessed than many people around the world today. We ought to be thankful unto him and bless his name. We ought to be grateful. Y'all with me? I'm losing you now. What's wrong here? I mean, I'm telling you the truth. We ought to be thankful unto him and bless his name. We can trace this American, I'm reading to you here now, but we can trace this American Christian tradition, Christian tradition uh, in the year 1623 after the harvest crops were gathered in November 1623. Governor William Bradford of the 1620 Pilgrim Colony, Plymouth Plantation in Plymouth, Massachusetts, proclaimed, All ye pilgrims with your wives and little ones do gather at the meeting house on the hill there to listen to the pastor and render thanksgiving to the Almighty God for all his blessings. <coughs> now that's thanksgiving. It was because of what they, were, what they had to be thankful for, what they were grateful for in life. And then uh, let me read you something else real quickly. Uh, Henry Lawrence, president of Continental Congress, the third Thursday of December 1777, was thus officially set aside for solemn thanksgiving and praise that with one heart and one voice the good people may express the grateful feelings of their hearts and consecrate themselves to the service of their divine benefactor and their humble and earnest supplication that it may please God through the merits of Jesus Christ mercifully to forgive and blot them, their manifold sins, out of remembrance, that it may please Him to take schools and seminaries of education so necessary for cultivating the principles of true liberty, virtue, and piety under his nurturing hand and to prosper the means of religion from the promotion and enlargement of that kingdom which consisteth of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Man, that doesn't sound like anything goes on today, does it? But that's what Thanksgiving, that's how it came to us. That is how, that is some of the ways that it came to us and how that it was presented and promoted in this country. And friend, if nobody else, if nobody else in the United States is thankful, this congregation should be thankful this morning. Amen? We, this congregation should be thankful for this congregation. I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking last night and I'm thinking uh, this morning, what a blessing it is to have a church like Gables Creek to come to. Now there's many places this morning that will, that will meet together and everything's all formal and uh, you know n nobody is, uh, everything is all written out, everything is all purposed and planned just exactly like, and it'll go through as a formality and things will go through, just everything will be just perfect, every song will be sung just to the note the message will be preached exactly, uh, you know, uh, as, as they think it should be preached, and yet God won't show up. I'd rather have, amen, a place like Gables Creek Baptist Church where the Lord shows up, where God comes around, where God blesses us, and God helps us, and God uses us, and God is in our presence and allows us to help others. We ought to be thankful for our church, amen. We ought to be thankful for a church that will come together and put on a promotion or a, a, a drive-through for the community that they, everybody that wants to come around can come and freely see the gospel message as they travel around our church. Amen. That is a blessing from God. That is something that we should be thankful for. And everyone that, that wants to come to Gables Creek Baptist Church, the doors are open. They can walk right in, sit down, listen to the preaching the Word of God. And unless they want to cause some kind of trouble, they're welcome to come back. Amen. 
We ought to be thankful unto Him and to bless His name. George Washington, he declared in uh, uh, January the 1st, 1795, our first United States president, George Washington, wrote his famed National Thanksgiving Proclamation in which he says that it is our duty as a people with devout reverence and affectionate gratitude to acknowledge our many and great obligations to Almighty God and to implore Him to continue is our duty as a people with devout reverence and affectionate gratitude to acknowledge our many and great obligations to Almighty God and to implore Him to continue and confirm the blessings we experience. George Washington said that. Man, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had leadership, if we had a president today that would stand up and declare the goodness of God? And how that we, as an American, as a Christian nation, should be holding to God for all His blessing and all that He has done for us. But we are living in the last days, which brings me to my message, which I will, which I will complete here in just a moment. Amen. In the book of, of uh, 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, so we jump from, from the uh, thought of being thankful to this question, are you thankful or are you unthankful? Is America thankful or are we unthankful? And being that we are living in the last days, Timothy says here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1, or Paul says to Timothy, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unthankful and unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. It is the world that we live in where people have become unthankful. That's what made me think, start thinking of the little things that I ought to be thankful for that many times I take for granted. And our country's blessed. We're blessed above measure we're blessed more than we ought to be blessed but we are a blessed nation we are still the most powerful nation on the earth we are still the most abundant nation upon the earth we have an abundance of food america feeds a lot of people but i'll tell you something we are we're going down a path quickly quickly we're going down a path of famine if god doesn't bless us again There are certain products that I deal with that are getting hard to get because of the drought in California. And if God don't bless them with rain, <coughs> then there's going to be a shortage of some food. Now, I've got some water here. I should get it. If uh, the cold weather gets down into Florida, as it has, that will create more of a food shortage. Now, I'm not trying to panic anyone. I'm just telling you. Even with all of that, we're such a blessed nation that we've got storehouses of food that will last for a while. God has blessed our nation. We're abundantly blessed. And yet we see some of the most unthankful people in the world today in our own country where we ought to be the most thankful people in the world. If you're unthankful, if you think that you've got it bad in this country, if people, whoever may be listening, uh, you know, uh, by the way of, of uh, uh, social media or whatever that might listen to our message today, if you happen to be one of those that think you've got it bad in this world, I'll help buy you a plane ticket that you go somewhere else and see where it's really bad. I've traveled the streets over in Egypt where people were laying by the hundreds, literally, people laying on the streets by the hundreds because they had nowhere to go. I've, lived, I, I've been in another country where, where sewage was running down the street because it had nowhere to go. Oh, friend, we're a blessed nation. The Bible says that we should be thankful unto Him and bless His name. But the Bible says that this is a generation... That is, uh, that is generally considered as unthankful. Unthankful, unholy. 
Everybody wants something. Everybody wants something given to them. Everybody wants something that's handed out that they don't have to work for or they don't have to, you know, they don't have to do anything for. Just give me what you got and I'll take what you got and I'll want a little bit more. We have become an unthankful nation. And friend, that's why that you and I as believers, you and I as children of God should show our thankfulness to this world. We should show the many blessings of God to this world. We should show them how thankful that we are for just being a child of God. We, the, the, the world of unthankful people, we see that in our nation today. We see that as, as, as people become, become more unthankful, they won't begin to want more. As, as people become more unthankful, you give, you give a man, how's that old saying go, give a man a fish and he'll last him a day, teach him how to fish and he'll feed him for a lifetime? Hey, we ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful for what God's given us. Be grateful to God for all that he's done for us. Unthankfulness, listen, unthankfulness leads to unhappiness. You think about that a moment. Unthankfulness leads to to unhappiness. So are you thankful today? If you are, you're happy. Because thankfulness comes from inside. It comes from the heart. It comes from deep down in here. Now many times we'll say thank you for something and hopefully we mean that. Thank you. But those are words. But true thankfulness comes from the heart. True thankfulness comes from the heart. I, I've been in, I, you know, there. I'll use this illustration because I'm, I know about it so personally. I've experienced it so personally that I have been truly grateful before to get into the ER, to the emergency room, and get there and a doctor run an IV in my arm and shoot it full of drugs. Boy, I'd say, look at the eyes got big right there. <laughs> That was only because I had a kidney stone that I was dying in pain with and I needed something and I was so grateful for that nurse that came and put that IV line and shot that so it'd kill that pain. I was actually, I was grateful, thankful for that. That come from inside here. I was so, I, listen, I was in such pain at one point with those things that I would have been grateful if that, if that little nurse would have knocked me out because I asked her to. I mean, I was hurting bad. She said, we got to wait for the doctor to give the orders to give you the drugs. I said, well, until that happens, take that little hammer I see hanging over there and hit me right there and at least knock me out. <laughs> I would have been thankful for that. But we ought to be a thankful people for all the blessings. And stop and think, friend. Stop and think this week. The, the, you, and, and you look around and you notice how sometimes people are so ungrateful and so unthankful. And you begin to think, look what God has done for me. I can list on and on the things that you and I should be thankful for. Every one of you here that's saved by the grace of God, that ought to be the number one thing you're thankful for is your salvation. You may not have two nickels to rub together in your pocket, but if you're saved by the grace of God, you're, you're as rich as any, any per you're richer than any person in this world. Because you own all that God's got. We ought to be grateful. We ought to be thankful. We ought to thank God for our salvation. And then, we'll, thankful or unthankful, there's your, there's your message on being unthankful. Now let's look at being thankful just for a moment and then we'll be through. At this Thanksgiving, the next few days, and particularly on Thursday, we ought to think about what Thanksgiving is. Now, we're all, all, everybody saved ought to be thankful for your salvation. If you're not saved, you ought to be thankful to God you're still alive and not in hell. If you're not saved, you ought to be grateful to God that you're alive and not in hell. And there's still hope for you. Even you have something to be thankful for. But if you're saved in the grace of God, when you get up on Thursday morning and you're getting ready and, and you're preparing that meal, and you sit down and that meal is all prepared, whatever time it may be, and you're sitting there and you're looking at a bountiful table full of food that you won't have probably once a year. You know, some of these things we eat, we only eat once a year. I done made up my mind this year. I don't care if I gain 20 pounds. 
Amen. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna show my thanks for the bountiful food that abounds this season. I'm gonna be that way. I just tell everybody this: set your scales back ten pounds. Yeah, you'll start out ahead if you set them scales back to ten pounds. You'll start out ahead, and then you get up there to well, the ten pounds is gone. Hey, you'll be right back to normal. Don't we wish it'd work that way? But listen, you set that meal out there and you look at that turkey. Really be thankful for that turkey. You be thankful you're not that turkey. <laughs> Amen. That turkey give everything to lay on your table and let you proceed with the knife and fork. Amen. Or that ham or that, that roast, whatever it is that you're eating. Be, you know, look at that and say, Lord, I'm glad you give that to me. Lord, I'm glad you allowed me to have that in my home. Whether you bought it, whether somebody gave it to you, whatever reason it is, that you've got that meal before you, whatever it is to eat. I mean, even if it's the meagerest thing that you can think of to have to eat that day, you ought to be grateful that you got something put in your mouth. Amen. Be thankful for that meal that you eat. Really look at that food that you're having and say, Lord, thank you for it. Then look around at your family that you've got around you. If you've got family around you, most of us will. Look around that family and say, Lord, thank you for my family. And if you're saved and going to heaven with you, thank God for that your children are going to heaven, that your parents are going to heaven, that your grandparents are already in heaven maybe. But be thankful that one day, amen, after this life, we're all going to be in heaven together. That's something to be thankful for, friend. There's a lot of gatherings that will go on this week where there will be a table and a house full of people and not one of them there will be saved by God's grace. And they don't understand. They understand that there's a day that they're having to feast and uh, do all these things, but they don't understand the meaning of being thankful to God. The Bible says be thankful unto Him and bless His name. And we ought to take a special time this coming Thanksgiving day. We ought to take a special time to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for my family. Thank you for my church. You know, before you ever sit down to eat, amen, have just a special little time of thanksgiving to God for all that he's done for you. The meal will taste better. The pounds you gain will be much sweeter. Amen. But be thankful unto him and bless his name. Let me ask you this morning. I'm through. Let me ask you this morning. Are you thankful to God? Are you thankful to Him for what He's done for you? Are you thankful for salvation? Man, if you're glad you're saved today, say amen. amen. If you're lost today, your hope is in Christ Jesus. Without Him, you have no hope of eternity except to die and go to hell without God. While every head's bowed, no one looking around just